Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about Summer Camp Island. It's this super cool animated TV show created by Julia Pott. The show is all about the adventures of two best friends, Oscar and Hedgehog, as they attend a summer camp that's anything but ordinary. They're talking animals, monsters, and enchanted objects all around them. Oscar and Hedgehog have the craziest experiences and meet all sorts of magical creatures, like Susie the Witch and Max the Yeti. Even the camp counselors are quirky and unique. The show is all about friendship, self-discovery, and being true to yourself. It's funny, heartwarming, and perfect for both kids and adults. Each episode is its own story, and you never know what kind of crazy situation Oscar and Hedgehog will find themselves in next. The show has a really cool art style and is known for its creative storytelling. It's all about capturing the wonder and imagination of childhood, and it does it so well. People love Summer Camp Island for its charm, character development, and the way it tackles big themes in a magical and fantastical way. But the story doesn't start there. Here we are going to analyze from beginning to end the full story of Summer Camp Island. Camp Island. So you too can enjoy the rich lore of this TV show. The story of the world of Summer Camp Island began with an elf named Bart who was born on an island full of life and bears that love to eat anything that moved. Bart was a bit older when she was born at the age of 60, but that didn't stop her from wanting to help everyone on the island. She decided to fight the bears, but things got a bit complicated and she ended up being exiled to the top of a mountain. Luckily, she discovered a lagoon filled with pink liquid and had a chat with a fern. Together, they came up with a plan to put all the bears on the island to sleep using Bart's reflection in the pink lagoon. So Barb had this amazing plan and she drew some elves inspired by the pink lagoon's reflection to help her out. It was working great until a zebra and a goat showed up and tried to steal the liquid from the lagoon. Unfortunately, the bears who usually protect the lagoon weren't around to stop them. Barb was in a bit of trouble, but she had a clever idea. She gave up her ability to sleep to put the enemies to sleep forever. It was a tough decision, but it worked out in the end. The pink liquid transformed into a powerful source of magic, which was pretty cool. Even the moon was grateful to Barb for her bravery. The story continues millions and millions of years later. In this world, magic was everywhere, and we met Susie a little witch from England who lived in a cozy brick house with her family. One day, her parents gave her the exciting news that she was going to have a little sister to play with. Time passed and the baby was born, but to everyone's surprise, she was much more skilled in witchcraft than Susie. However, the little sister had trouble controlling her powers and sometimes caused sudden weather changes. So the family had to travel to the North Pole to find oil that could help her channel her powers. Susie was asked to keep the reason for the trip a secret until they returned when she meets 15 years old. While the parents were away, the girls were left in the care of their great-great-great-great-grandmother who was very mean to them. So they decided to escape and find their parents in the North Pole. They ended up being taken in by a witch named Mary who offers them a place to stay if they sell corn for her. When Susie turns 15, she's really excited for her parents to come back because there's a special ritual that happens when a magician's apprentice reaches that age. During a corn-selling day, Susie gets a bottle of immortality, but then she gets a letter that says her parents got lost in a storm. She's really upset and doesn't want her birthday to end without her parents, so she decides to use the bottle to make her birthday last until they come back. While she's in her room, her sister Mildred tries to help with the ritual but ends up accidentally turning some of Mary's valuable objects into frogs. Susie was fuming. She had had enough of the situation and decided to confront Mildred with the truth. She blamed her for every single bad thing that had happened to their family since she was born. The argument escalated quickly, and Mary had to intervene to calm things down. She took Susie to a secluded spot to talk to her. Later, Mary decided to lift Susie's spirits by performing an improvised ritual to make her an official witch. 
but when they returned to the room, they were shocked to find it empty and the window was broken. Mildred had decided to escape while casting spells all over town. The next day, Susie and Mary went out to look for Mildred, but the people were after her, wanting to burn her for all the things she had done. To make matters worse, the whole town mistook Susie for her sister and wanted to take her to the stake instead. Mary knew they had to flee London to the United States to escape the danger. Meanwhile, Mildred found solace in the forest, where she befriended a ghost. She reflected on her actions and realized that she needed to go back and clear things up. But when she returned, she found no one there. Feeling lost and alone, she decided to take a ship bound for the North Pole to look for her parents. Susie became a super important witch for the world. But then, the world was all about magic and having a witch on your team was a huge honor. Susie even became the right-hand woman to the mayor. But as time went on, machines started to take over and magic slowly disappeared. It got so bad that people started forgetting about witches altogether. Magic had to escape to a little island in the sea. Susie, with the little bit of power she had left, made a plan to evacuate to that island and summoned all the remaining magical creatures to the dock. She even managed to create a boat, but it left her totally exhausted to the point that she forgot that she was a witch. Luckily, a little girl named Ramona found her and tried to help her remember who she was. Since Susie forgot who she was, Ramona took the wheel and steered the boat to the island. Once they arrived on the island, they met Barb and spilled the beans about their mission. But before they can save the magic, they need to get their hands on the crystal that channels it. The very same crystal that has been solidified for millions of years. Barb is skeptical, warning them about the dangers that lie ahead. Frozen time monsters and an obsession with the future are just a few of the obstacles they'll face. But Susie and Ramona are determined to save the magic, so they ask for a moonstone and enter frozen time. The chase is on as they come face to face with the monsters of time. But Susie accidentally burps and defeats one of the monsters. Who knew burps could be such a powerful weapon? Their pure past and the monsters are pure future, making them the perfect match. And so, in a strange turn of events, Susie asks Ramona to hit her back while she lists important moments of a person's life. With their unbeatable logic, they manage to defeat most of the monsters. However, Susie's burps ran out, and the monsters caught Ramona, absorbing the time inside her and making her age 15 years faster. Susie was quick to act, grabbing Ramona and escaping to the elves' guard. But the elves were ready to accept the end of the magic world, leaving Susie feeling hopeless. She decided to sing a song to spend her last moments, but fate had other plans. By pure chance, they managed to grow many pink babies of time, which helped them defeat the monsters and stabilize the magic diamond. Suddenly, a creature appeared, telling them that they were the ones the prophecy talked about. The prophecy stated that the two best friends would save magic, but the creature doubted Susie's ability to fulfill it since she was sick. However, they were left with no other options, and the creature gave them a folder with instructions to follow on their journey to save magic and create an academy of 10 witches on the islands. Out of these 10 witches, Emma and Mallory stood out. During their training, they were supposed to catch many ghosts, but Mallory was possessed due to Emma's lack of commitment. The witches failed to exercise the ghost, but Emma had a brilliant idea. She made Mallory sneeze the ghost capturing it in a jar for their experiments. Suddenly, the folder began to move once again, as if possessed by some unseen force. The friends watched in awe as it warned them of a new arrival, witch number 13. But that wasn't all. As they turned the page, they discovered that it was the last one and contained a letter that held the key to saving magic itself. With renewed hope, they knew that their goal was closer than ever before. The very next day, a girl named Betsy arrived on the island. She arrived wielding a tennis racket as her wand. Little did she know that she was about to embark on a journey to become a witch herself. Betsy had been sent to what she thought was a reform school for wearing pants, 
but in reality, her mother had sent her to the island to become a witch. The two friends knew that Betsy needed someone to trust in order to improve her magic. They suggested that she become better friends with Alice, another one of the witches. With their help, Betsy began her training, and soon they were ready to tackle the supposed last prophecy. As they pointed their wands towards the folder, a magical envelope appeared before them. Susie eagerly tried to open it, but to everyone's surprise, there was nothing written inside. The secret to saving magic was not there. Instead, the message was clear. The witch who lives forever must stay in the present, while the one who grows old must stay frozen in time. With this knowledge, they knew that they had to continue their mission, no matter what challenges lay ahead. She tried to convince her witchy pals, Betsy and Alice, to take her place by offering them the last bit of the potion. However, Ramona, the voice of reason, reminded Susie that they were destined to save the world from magic and that they must follow the prophecy. So the witches graduated and Ramona left for frozen time. But the story doesn't end there. Alice soon found herself at Susie's cabin, worried about her immortality and all the things she wouldn't be able to enjoy because of it. And to top it off, she let out a burp and a ghost appeared, reciting stories. Susie explained that when one is immortal, unresolved problems from the past manifest as burp ghost, providing emotional support. So, Susie explains that sometimes problems can stick around for a while, depending on how serious they are. Then, she heads to the forest to try and get rid of a ghost that represents Ramona's problem. But the ghost doesn't want to leave. So, Susie takes it to her paternal grandparents' ghost, and they adopt it. After that, Susie goes to bed and asks not to be disturbed. While she's sleeping, the other witches decide to play a prank on the yetis, but it goes wrong and causes an avalanche. Luckily, most of the witches use their powers to escape, but Betsy isn't so lucky. She gets lost in the forest and meets the ghost of Susie's problem. They become friends and even meet the ghost's adoptive parents. Betsy shares her love for tennis and how much she misses playing since moving to the island. So, during a game of this awesome sport, he finally mustered up the courage to tell Betsy how much he liked her. Unfortunately, he had to run after a ball that went flying far away, so Betsy didn't get a chance to tell him that she felt the same way. But things took a crazy turn when the ball ended up at Susie's door. Poor Susie thought a ghost was coming to bother her, so she erased her memory completely to forget about the problem with Ramona. When Ramona finally went to check on Susie, she realized what had happened and it was a mistake that Susie carried with her for the rest of her days. As time passed, the island's magic started to fade and the witches couldn't practice their magic like they used to because Susie was so depressed after Ramona left. But there was a glimmer of hope when Ramona communicated with Susie through a temporal mirror and told her about a new prophecy. They were ordered to bring new magical creatures from New York, but they didn't realize they were magical. Unfortunately, their powers were too strong and the magic didn't last long. At first, Susie was feeling pretty down and didn't want to accept Ramona's offer because she didn't think anyone cared about magic anymore. But Ramona convinced her that if she completed the task in the folder, she could break free from the frozen time and see Susie again. This really lifted Susie's spirits and she, Betsy, and Alice headed to New York to search for new magical creatures. They stumbled upon a young woman in a restaurant who sounded like a yeti but didn't look like one. They tried to talk to her but realized that most magical beings in the city didn't even know they were magical. So they came up with a clever plan to invite all the magical kids to a summer camp on an island. Susie eventually returned to tell her friend that the mission was a success, but unfortunately she found out that the possibility of leaving the frozen time was never real and that she was deceived. She felt pretty upset and ended up breaking her friendship with Ramona, but she still welcomed the new campers with open arms. It's time to meet the stars of our story, Oscar the Elephant and Hedgehog the Hedgehog, who happen to be best friends. They're heading to summer camp with a bunch of other kids, and the camp is run by three teenage witches. 
Susie, Betsy, and Alice. Once the grown-ups leave, the counselors transform and the island comes to life. Trees and bushes start chatting, stones start flying, and even the sun seems to be in on the magic. It's clear that this is no ordinary island. It's home to all sorts of creatures, from elves and witches to aliens and yetis. But don't worry, the kids are quick to figure out which witch is which. Susie is the bossy one, who's not too fond of Oscar at first. Betsy is super cool and kind to everyone, and Alice is the most powerful, but also the most reckless. Along for the ride are Max, a chill bat boy who always sticks with Oscar, and Lucy, who the girls remember from the restaurant. Meet Pepper, a young and spoiled panda who's also incredibly gentle. She's joined by her new friend Oliver, a dog, and two giraffe sisters named Alexa and Lem. But when Oscar sees some strange things happening at the camp, he decides to run away. However, after thinking about his friend Hedgehog, he decides to give the camp another chance. That same night, a new character named Pajama joins the group. Things start to look up as they have exciting adventures and meet new creatures like a yeti named Saxophone, the king of the world alien and his partner, an elf named Bart, and monsters named Edward, Howard, and Mortimer. They even meet a ghost who was Betsy's boyfriend and seems to be remembering his past. It's been quite the journey, but they're all having a blast on this magical island. So our little hedgehog has been on quite a few adventures already, but one day she gets some sad news from her dad. He tells her that she is going to have to move to a different camp. She's really bummed out about it, especially since she has to say goodbye to her buddy Oscar on their last day together. But things get even crazier when they stumble upon some pink babies of time during a frozen moment. After three months of time standing still, they start getting attacked by monsters from the future. Luckily, they meet Ramona, who's also living in frozen time and raising those pink babies. She warns them that if they don't fix things, the monsters will destroy the whole island. So our little gang bands together to fight off the monsters and restore time to its normal flow. Oscar even throws a moonstone into the ocean to make it happen. In the end, the friends say their goodbyes, but it turns out that Hedgehog manages to convince her dad to let her stay at the same camp as Oscar. The next day, Ramona decided to throw a dinner party to thank Time for moving forward. Back in the day, time didn't exist, which meant people could age in a matter of seconds. Anyway, the dinner offering was simple, just a soup made with salt and pepper. But Oscar forgot the salt, and that made time pretty angry. Suddenly, things started to get a little weird and reality was broken. Luckily, our little elephant friend was able to travel through time and fix the mistake. After all the adventures at camp, Hedgehog now wants to learn magic and has asked Betsy to teach him. In the process of teaching, Hedgehog falls head over heels for Max and can't seem to focus on his spells. Barb suggests that he confess his feelings to Max so that he can move on and concentrate on his magic. At first, Hedgehog is hesitant because she's afraid of being rejected, but Barb reassures her that it's okay and that she can handle her emotions. However, during the final test to receive his wand, Max is the one being tested, and Hedgehog gets lost in his feelings again, causing her to fail. But at the last moment, she gathers the courage to confess her love to Max. Unfortunately, Max doesn't feel the same way and only sees Hedgehog as a friend. Despite the rejection, Hedgehog becomes stronger and manages to overcome the final obstacle to receive his wand. However, she ends up misusing her magic, which Susie sees as disrespectful and takes her wand away. The group of friends rushes to Susie's cabin to retrieve the wand and discovers that she's in a meeting with the leaders of all the creatures in the city called Heatstroke. Susie's basement has a secret entrance. Some of the monsters were a little worried about Hedgehog practicing magic. Susie reminded them of a girl named Mildred who caused some trouble in town when she got her wand. But then Ramona came to the rescue and revealed that she had asked Betsy to teach Hedgehog. 
At first, Susie wasn't too thrilled about being Hedgehog's teacher, but she soon realized how much potential Hedgehog had. One night, the town had to quarantine because the ancient bears woke up. Which was a bit scary, but thankfully everyone made it through okay. Oscar was hanging out at Susie's house and realized he couldn't find his pajamas. He ended up chatting with Susie about her pajamas all afternoon and then discovered that she sleepwalks. Susie left her house while sleepwalking and Oscar had to save her without waking her up. After that, some crazy things happened to our main character. He witnessed the king of the aliens and his partner getting married, saw a hedgehog turn into a wolf woman after being bitten by a baby wolf, and even ended up in a pony's body. One day, Susie asked Oscar and the hedgehog to help Ramona in frozen time to create more pink babies of time. They learned that to hatch these eggs, you need to express a lot of love and happiness. Unfortunately, Ramona was feeling sad because she missed her old relationship with Susie, and the creatures that hatched were defective. But there was another way to get these pink babies of time, by having a fun time with your best friends. So Oscar and the Hedgehog sang a song to create healthy babies that could counteract the monsters. One full moon night, Susie discovered that Betsy was actually a wolf girl, just like the Hedgehog. Susie really doesn't like these creatures, but she's willing to make an exception for her friend because she loves her so much. Oscar realized that he feels lonely without Hedgehog, so he talked to a psychologist shark about it. He confessed that he admires Hedgehog a lot and feels left behind when she goes to explore her potential as a wolf during a full moon. It turns out that Hedgehog and Oscar have known each other since they were babies, and Hedgehog's parents were very strict. Oscar has always been a source of joy and happiness for Hedgehog, and the shark explained that it's because Oscar is a glow worm with a powerful ability to transmit happiness through a pink aura. During this conversation, Jim Jams explained Ramona and Susie's past to the two friends so they could understand their attitudes and why they're so negative. As time went on, their adventures became calmer, and the most exciting thing that happened was when they became temporary kings of the alien's kingdom while the real kings were on their honeymoon. After that, they helped Lucy tap into her magic potential and communicate with the yetis to become part of their family. Lucy just discovered her magical ability and she's the third camper to do so. Later on, Oscar and Alice decided to have a picnic and Oscar made some delicious mushroom soup. But Alice was too scared to try it because she thought it would make her hair turn into spaghetti. Well, the rumors spread like wildfire and the mushrooms got pretty upset with Alice for lying. She even got pursued by an entity called the Hat of Death. Eventually, Alice was captured and taken to the Mother Mushroom. She thought she was going to die, but instead the mother gave her a spoonful of soup to prove that it was actually delicious and to disprove the rumor. During this whole adventure, it was hinted that Oscar and Alice might be family, since he's an elephant and she's a mammoth. Alice even suggested that they could be cousins. But then, Oscar got into some trouble with a ghost named Ernest who thought he was impolite. So, Oscar was sent to a school of good manners where he failed the course under pressure. Ernest was so mad that he decided to beat him up, but since he's a ghost, his hands just went right through Oscar's elephant face. So, the ghost tells Hedgehog that they love going through things, but someone has opened the door and they can't do what they want. Hedgehog then finds some seeds that let her see the future, and she sees that she'll be a model student in five years. She really wants to change things in the present since the future she saw for Oscar wasn't good, but every time she tries, the future gets worse. Eventually, she ruins her own graduation. Hedgehog goes to Susie for help, and Susie tells her not to worry. There are millions of possibilities, and nothing is set in stone. Feeling better, Hedgehog goes to a broom maker to learn to fly, but she realizes she has a weird posture. She visits her ancestors and learns that her great-great-great-great-great-grandmother used the same posture to avoid witch hunters. Now that she knows it's not a danger anymore, she changes her posture and everything is good. Let's talk about the adventures of our favorite monsters. We all know Duo is amazing, but today we're going to focus on Pepper. 
By accident, Pepper discovers he has magical abilities and can transform into a cloud and fly through the skies. How cool is that? And now there are four monsters with special abilities. Moving on to the next part of the story, Hedgehog gets invited to a sporting event, but Oscar doesn't. But don't worry, Oscar has changed and doesn't let it bother him anymore. Mortimer takes Oscar to a room with jars of scents that transport them to specific points in the past. They go to a memory of Oscar at Harvard, where he was sad about not being accepted into a club. The elephant realizes how sad Mortimer got and decides to help his friend by infiltrating the university and starting an unofficial club with other monsters. They accomplish their goal, but now they need to find a way back home. They turn to a witch who agrees to help them if they can get the governor to change the anti-feeling laws. Exciting stuff, right? So the gang succeeded in their adventure, but unfortunately the witch didn't know how to send them back home. This made Oscar really sad because he thought he would never see his loved ones again. But don't worry, the monsters threw a party and during it, Oscar accidentally sneezed and was transported back to the present day. Mortimer was there waiting for him and thanked him for his help. Now we're at the end of the story, at least for now. Max found out that he's actually a vampire, making him the fifth camper to discover their true identity. Oliver went to Susie to learn more about his magic, and even though she couldn't tell him what creature he was, she helped guide him around the island to discover it himself. The next day, Alexa went to Susie with the same wish as Oliver, to find out what creature she really is. After a day full of challenges, she discovered that she's actually a giant. We also found out that Alexa's younger sister, Lem, doesn't have any special abilities. She had actually used a fake letter to get to the island just to be near her sister. Lem spent the entire day with Ramona and then went to see Susie to come clean about everything. She even invited her to breakfast. Lem explained that he now understands why he did what he did, but he still cares about Ramona. He asked Susie how Ramona was doing and what she said. And that's how the fifth season of Summer Camp Island came to an end. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and share. If you want us to keep covering the story, be sure to hit the bell. Check out other videos in the channel since we always cover popular series from beginning to end.